Coach, you uh, had the game within five points midway through the, the third quarter. What did you feel like was working for you guys up to, to get to that point? And then what did you feel like changed after that? Yeah, we were down, I think, 14 at halftime and uh, did a really good job coming out of the half of stabilizing the game, giving ourselves a chance, uh, and kept it there pretty much throughout the third. Uh, and then obviously they opened up in the fourth. But I liked our response out of the half. We were able to make a couple adjustments to how we were playing uh, to make ourselves more effective and harder to play against uh, and had a really good third uh, after, you know, hanging in there a little bit in the first half. Obviously it wasn't enough tonight, but, you know, I, th I like the fight out of halftime. Kaysen had a really good just kind of two-in performance with his five assists but also four steals. What did you see from him tonight? Yeah, good activity on the defensive end. I mean, he isn't the tallest guy, but he offsets it with great athleticism, great hands, great instincts. I thought, you know, that he showed that tonight. And then offensively just continues to grow in confidence. You know, it's one of the benefits of the circumstance we're in is it allows guys to stretch a little bit, see what they're capable of. Yeah. Uh, and I thought he showed some of that tonight. You, I think, touched on this before the game, but just the chances that you're getting right now to see this team have to generate offense and generate stuff without two primary playmakers. Yep. What have you made of 30 assists last night and you get you know, multiple guys, I think five, six guys in double figures again tonight? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, obviously we'd rather be at full strength always, but um, every, there's an opportunity in every game. And the opportunity right now is to, you know, stretch the minutes of some guys and get them, you know, significant run uh, and also see guys in different roles and stretch their roles a little bit. Like I said before the game, there's going to be circumstances, you know, down the stretch of the season into the playoffs um, and moving forward where teams really try to take out um, you know, our, our guys that are our main creators, our highest usage players, and it's going to force, you know, other guys to be aggressive and to be confident, and these types of games help them to kind of build that muscle. And then, you know, you guys were able to kind of hold them in check for good portions of this game, but it just seems like they have this explosive button, and, you know, Brown didn't have anything going, and then suddenly yeah. burst. What is it like trying to just keep the lid on things for as long as possible as you possibly can. I thought, you know, given the fact that we didn't shoot the ball particularly well, you know, we were able to keep the game, you know, in a in a decent spot for a long time on a night that where we didn't shoot it great. You know, which is all you can really ask for. It's like you just want to hang around long enough to let the game turn potentially. I thought that's what happened in New York. You know, it was a similar circumstance where they had a big third, you know, that we kept it in a manageable spot. And then we get a little flurry in the fourth, and next thing you know, we have the lead. You know, but if you're down by 20, you can't do that. So, um, I thought we did that well tonight, and we just never got the flurry. You know, but um, you know, we the it, the end score didn't reflect uh, our competitiveness in that one. Well, obviously, um, you just mentioned just what this stretch does without Doug, without Shay. Yep. Um, but it feels like so much of what's worked this season is obviously either having you know two of the three of you know Doug Shay. Chet, uh, with, with as many games as you have left, are you maybe worried with the, without those two? I don't know their timeline. Are you maybe worried that you might command too much or, or stretch the, the guys that are left maybe too thin? No, definitely not. You know, I think um, nobody's minutes have been crazy. You know, we're trying to spread that out in a in a you know pretty. It's not like we're playing eight guys because they're out. You know, we're staying with ten or eleven and you know spreading the minutes out pretty good. We're not going to put anybody in a situation. Um, that they are overworked or anything like that. And then we're going to have a week after the season ends, you know, which is going to help everybody recharge. So, you know, it's actually a good opportunity for us to get guys minutes that haven't played these types of minutes. And so I guess I'd follow that up by asking, do you feel like the stretch just play style-wise, what you guys have to do? I mean, I know the Celtics are the Celtics, but yep. um, do you feel like, you know, with the with the lack of creation that, that comes with not having fair dub, do you feel like you're asking too much of the guys that that are there in terms of what they can offer? Um, no, we're not asking too much of anybody. It's just we have to work together for advantages on a lot of plays. Uh, and when we do that, we can generate them. But, um, you know, there's times where Shea's got the ball and they just double them. And the advantage is created by the defense. You know, like that's not happening right now. So we have to work together uh, to create them. And on a lot of possessions we have, you know, we've done that. Um, certainly last night on a ton of possessions to gain control of that game. We did it a lot of times tonight, um, and that's that's the way you got to do it. Yeah, and, you know, obviously you talked about Dub and just kind of the assignments, some of the assignments he's taking. So those are, are maybe wackier than others. Maybe he's guarding a seven-footer. Yep. Um, 
with tonight with the, the way Chris has played, I just wonder how different would that have looked with, with Dub on the floor? Like, what might that have looked like? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason we play those guys 30, 35 minutes every night. You know, they're obviously very effective. Um, and so when you take that out, you know, it's, it's, we're not going to be as good of a team um, in terms of our ceiling. But, you know, I thought, you know, tonight they, did, they attacked a ton of switches. You know, they're, they're choosing their matchup. They knew we were switching him. Um, so I'm not sure that they would have chosen Dub if he was out there. You know, I mean, they would have continued to choose the guys they were choosing. And so yeah, it would have helped to have him. But again, these are good opportunities for us to learn our team. It's good opportunities for our guys to stretch themselves. Um, there are benefits to this circumstance that we can draw. Last thing for me, mm -hmm. for Chet specifically. Uh, obviously, with the lack of creation, it felt like he was trying to go, maybe not, uh, maybe he wasn't trying to disrupt the floating game, but there were times where he had to go one-on-one -on -one with, with Chris Epps, it felt like just during the stretch without those guys, like what have you seen from him in terms of maybe trying to create for himself and just that, that process in itself? Yeah, I mean, uh, on the plays where he has to, it's usually end of clock. Like, if he truly has to, it's end of clock, and it just means we haven't created an advantage to that point. And now someone has to go try to make a play up against the shot clock, which is not a position of strength. So, um, you know, that's why we want to play with pace. That's why we want to, you know, play with great pace inside the actions, gain advantages as early in the possession as possible, and then maintain those advantages. Um, and I thought, you know, this is an elite defense. This is the best defense in the league, or one of them. So. Uh, that's why they're good. They're hard to crack. Um, we cracked them on some possessions, certainly didn't crack them on enough. Um, didn't finish some of the plays uh, when we did. And, you know, that's how you end up losing the game. It did seem like you guys cracked them more often when Josh was out there and just given the way that he's able to play make. But, and being the focal point probably on a lot of possessions tonight, would you make of the way that he was able to deal with probably more attention than being the primary playmaker and getting you into good stuff? Um, it seemed like he got you into really good stuff uh, when he was out there. Yeah, I mean, we want to be a team where there's not like a primary playmaker where we're working together for the advantages. But I thought he um, was on the gas tonight and played with really good thrust, which is the way that you have to play against a defense like that. You know, it's just if you're slow inside the actions or slow with your decisions against their defense, you know, that's why they're good, you know? And so I thought he was on the gas tonight. It gave him a good chance to get downhill. He was able to find some plays there. Um, and those were our best possessions tonight when we played with that sort of force. Just thinking about him in the past, there were some times even against this team where he would get kind of stopped up at the elbow or, you know, slowed down. How big of a sign of growth is his trajectory to be able to be on the gas in this way that we've seen here. Yeah, not just for him. It's the offense has evolved too, you know, because on a lot of those plays, you know, there's a screen or a slip or something that's creating the initial advantage and then he's gassing it. So it's not only the individual growth, but it's the growth of our system and, you know, the rest of our players and him, you know, in unison to create more of those advantages. Anybody else? Thanks. All right. Thank All right. you. Thanks,